Papua New Guinea. Rugged, remote and spectacular. This chain of mountain ranges and river valleys, stretching from east to west across the island of New Guinea, is one of the most environmentally and culturally diverse regions on Earth. Supporting lush montane forests, grasslands and a network of important rivers and lakes, this productive region has long been home to thriving agricultural communities, whose people have worked this land for thousands of years. Today, the rural people of PNG, renowned for being fiercely proud of their heritage, remain strongly tied to the land. In villages scattered across these fertile mountains and along the coastal hinterlands and small islands, many of their traditional farming and cultural practices still flourish, often alongside newer technologies from afar. But rich natural resources don't guarantee easy living. The majority of rural people in PNG survive on less than $2 a day. Most rural families grow vegetables for food, but few can afford to buy or raise their own meat, so their diets are poor in protein. Chronic malnutrition and stunted growth are problems for children here, who also often miss out on a formal education. Poverty and other challenges such as addictions also negatively affect some communities. There is, however, new cause for hope. Solutions to many of this region's problems are appearing in the form of fish, or more specifically, a fish production program. Launched in 2010 by PNG's National Fisheries Authority, supported by the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, the Inland Aquaculture Program aims to improve livelihoods and lifestyles of rural communities by teaching villagers how to farm fish and conducting research on better farming practices. People have been farming the land here in PNG for over 7,000 years, but fish farming's only been around for a couple of decades. They usually grow fish in small ponds right next to their vegetable gardens, and it's a means of providing fresh protein for people uh, at very low cost. Tilapia and carp are very good species to farm here in PNG. They're not considered a pest species here as they are in other countries. Um, they're very resilient, they can handle poor water quality and you can go for a few days without feeding them without causing any major production problems. NFA is the lead agency here in Papua New Guinea that's responsible for trying to nurture the industry. It's a, it's a very young industry, so NFA has been investing funds to help people start up in fish farming. It's also working with Australians and other organisations from other countries uh, to help facilitate research to try and solve some of the aquaculture bottlenecks. NFA has taken community-based aquaculture in PNG to new heights, with a five-fold increase in the number of fish ponds over the last decade. NFA is conducting research into better fish farming technologies that are locally practical and affordable. Its work centres around teaching farmers how to dig and stock their ponds and produce quality fingerlings. It also facilitates the sharing of fish farming skills with community leaders and vulnerable youths. We are doing the training for almost 11 years now. Mostly we try to target the community leaders because they are the ones who try to settle problems and then uh, we ask the, the leaders to bring in the youth especially. They are looking for means and ways of living life. Outreach activities run by the Inland Aquaculture Project also extend into prisons. The innovative Fish for Prisons program teaches inmates how to farm fish and provides them with a livelihood option for when they re-enter society. I like farming fish. I like to look after fish. And every morning our boss get to our cell and open. When we open up, we get drink tea, we eat biscuit, and then our boss bring us to this area. So we always come here and we work here. And so I like to look after fish. 
He taught me many ways to look after fish. On top of providing training for locals, the NFA has been researching fish farming efficiency. The Inland Aquaculture Project is about solving problems for farmers who are farming fish here in PNG. A lot of them struggle to feed their fish. Um, they have problems uh, trying to get the fish to table size. So we're conducting research alongside the farmers to try and solve those problems so that they're more productive. Making nutrient-rich yet affordable fish food is one area of research focus, while improving genetics of the farmed fish is another. Changes to pond design and site selection are also priorities of the program, which has seen the number of fish farms in PNG grow steadily to more than 60,000. To date, much time, energy and money have been spent on the program, but its payoffs are not difficult to see. PNG's blossoming fish farming industry is already yielding unexpectedly big benefits. It's been fantastic to see over the last few years that a lot of our team members here in Papua New Guinea have increased their technical skills, their research capacity, and that's translating into real world impacts. And for example, we're now seeing farmers producing more fish, better quality fish, and that for them is really important because it means that they can feed their family nutritional, high quality based protein. Only grow good, healthy. Now, only save some talk talk quick. Pick new blow me now. Stop long grade four. Now, Max long school and middle school and last time I came been come long third place law school. Now me am mas. I'm kaya get fish so fish help me more. Now that they are fish, you can see a big difference with the the color of their skin. Beyond the nutritious protein they provide, the fish in these farms are giving many villagers a year-round source of income. People farming fish, grow the fish, they sell the fish in the markets, they get earnings and uh, they pay for the children's school fee or it assists with other um, spendings in, in, the, in the household. Kind of some income, no side of fish. So you sell them fish, you pay some money, you pay some school fee. Or we buy more clothes, or trousers, or mattress, pillow. All kinds of things we buy. We throw fish to One of the trainers who taught us told me that your farm is your bank, which is very true. So I, if I don't have any money in my pocket, I just go out to the farm, get all the fish which I need there, and I take it to town and sell them and get the money. And I have. They build good houses, so they have good meal after the, what, what they sell, and they wear good clothes. And it's a same change that I see that it brings joy. A dramatic reduction in tribal fighting, particularly in the highlands, has also been attributed to the fish farms. When we have been uh, into, gone into tribal fight, we face a lot of problems. People died without any good reason. Places bent down. Ebile Weli as an agriculture uh, fish farming uh, introduction to the area, travel fight has stopped. No travel fight. From now on, uh, there is peace in that uh, road highway. It used to be roadblocks and that, but with the fish training going in, uh, the road is free and there is no travel fighting. Requiring regular maintenance, the fish farms are also giving people who were once disengaged a positive focus in life. Seeing people, especially youths, who were previously involved in drug, um, smoking marijuana and all that, they practically removed all the, um, the marijuana plots and everything. They dug fish ponds, and now they're growing fish, and that's, that's something that I'm, I'm really proud of. When they come to, into town and I say hands with them and I feel that the hands are rough and I said thank you, congratulations. I said, what, what's that for? And they said, no, I can feel that you are already, I mean, you are working. You can see it clearly in them that they are proud to be a fish farmer. While the fish farms have provided many people with nutrition, income and a sense of purpose, to the prisoners they have given even more. Trainees in the Fish for Prisons program talk about life before and after fish. 
when I came to prison, I thought that I'll, I have no jo choice or I have no hope. I think that I'll just stay in prison and when I release, I go back. I, I, will, I have no choice because I'm in prison and everything is gone. And I, I'll just go and stay just as poor of pe person. I'm happy that when I finish, when I release from prison and I go back to my home, I'll do that job. I'll try to look after fish because my area has got many good rivers, many good creeks from the mountain to valley. So I can dig some fish ponds and look after fish. So I get some knowledge and then I go back to my home. I'll become somebody. So before me, I was kind of passing out, I was a rascal passing or this animal here. I was able to form me, I was able to project me. I was able to project me, I was able to build 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 me. I was able to build a house in the Olamas now. I was able to build a house in the Olamas. I was able to build a house in the project. I was able to build a house in the Olamas. I was able to build a house in the Olamas. I was able to build a house in the community. I was able to build a house in the Olamas. I was able to build a house in the Olamas. In the Olamas community, I was able to build a house in the Olamas. I changed now. I changed the name of my name. Daddy Fish. I said, no. I changed the name of my name. I said, no. I changed the name of my name. 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 The impacts of the NFA's Inland Aquaculture Program are clearly positive and profound, including improved nutrition, food security and peace across PNG. And providing the program continues to be funded, even better results are expected for the future. I believe uh, aquaculture is, has a lot of potential in PNG, which a lot of people, uh, all of PNG can benefit from. And we just have to put a lot of research, put a lot of effort into developing the industry. I'm feeling very positive about the future of the project. And I'm certain that once this project comes to an end that a lot of the people that we work with will keep carrying on with the research independently. And we've got a lot of farmers and extension officers now that have got the technical capacity to keep supporting the industry over the next 10 years.